Hey everybody, my name's Tony and welcome to my channel. I haven't been able to post for a while, but I hope you find this two-part video series to be worth the wait. If you're a complete control junkie like I am, maybe you can't even imagine the idea of using VST instruments that don't have NKS Lake Guide and keyboard control support. That's certainly the case with me, and so call me spoiled if you want to. I am and I admit it. But since I became a Persona Sphere subscriber and installed everything that Sphere had to offer, I slowly started to get sucked down the Persona rabbit hole. And now I'm conflicted because I really want to make use of an abundance of new instruments that I now have available to me. If only I could load all my new Persona stuff into complete control and then I'd be a happy guy. But sadly, that's not possible since Persona's instruments are not in VST format. And that's really quite a shame. But undeterred, I decided to set out and find another way to use Personas libraries, but without giving up the complete control features that I know and love. Well, in the end, I was able to bridge the two products in a way that I can live with, and I can't wait to share it with you. But first, please do me a favor and like this video, and if you can subscribe, that would be even more fantastic. So let's go. So let's review my screen setup to start with. As you can see, I have both an MK1 and an MK2 set up for this tutorial. Accordingly, I have both Complete Control and Controller Editor open, along with the Studio One session. And while the MK2's MIDI editor can only be accessed from within Complete Control, the MK1 actually uses a separate app called Controller Editor for creating and maintaining its MIDI templates. So I thought it would be helpful to take a look at existing templates that I've created for each keyboard, starting with the MK2. And as you can see in my MIDI editor, I have an ever-growing number of templates that I've created for use with Persona Symphonic Orchestra. And I must say that this plugin has a host of quality instrument sample sets and articulations galore for pretty much every instrument imaginable. And in terms of workflow, let's spend a minute on that too, starting with a tip for using the Presence GUI. Because so many instruments have such a large number of articulations and or large note ranges, you will find at times that one or the other is not fully visible on the Presence Virtual Keyboard. Well, here's the tip. The keyboard has a zoom feature, and all you have to do is press Control and turn your scroll wheel to zoom in and out for the best view. And of course, on your complete keyboard, you can use the Octa buttons to shift your light guide template back and forth if required. Now let's have a quick look at the sample templates I have loaded on each keyboard before we get started on creating a new template for each. On the MK2, I have PSO Classic Flute loaded with the articulation set to legato, and as you would expect, the articulations can be changed on the fly with the red colored key switches. You'll also note on the template and the complete keyboard that I have the note range displayed in blue. And finally, the remaining dark regions are deactivated keys which is also the case on the virtual piano roll. And you Impact XT users can set up light guide templates to match your drum mappings as well. Of course you already know you can use your keyboard for drum recording, but now you can take Impact XT to the next level with light coded keys that match the colors on your drum map. So here we've got kick in red, The snare is in yellow, the toms in purple, the hats in orange, the cymbals in blue, and finally the rides in green. 
So let's get on with creating a template for each keyboard and we'll start with the French horn template for the MK2. In Presence, I'll navigate to PSO Classic Brass French Horn and left click to load it. Part of this map is off screen and so I will press shift and scroll forward to move the key map to the right in order to get the key switches into view. And I can also control scroll to zoom in and out if I want to fine tune the overall key map size. Okay, that looks good. And now that I'm satisfied with the updated map view, I will click the page button and then click update preset. So this preset loads with the exact same view from now on. Now over to complete control and we should be on the keys page. Now click the plus button Enter the name and I am continuing with the same file name structure so my maps show in the exact same order they are listed in presence. I can see this map requires five zones and so I will just create five zones right off the bat. Now left click the first zone to activate it. Now press your finger on the first key switch and then left click and drag the first split to the correct position. Look at the light guide split moving on your keyboard and just line it up with your finger position. This first zone is deactivated, so change the assign type to off. Now activate the next zone and place your finger on the last key switch. Shift the split once again and once you are done, change the color to red to match presence. So you go ahead and finish up that template for the MK2 and I will move on and get started on the Impact XT template in Controller Editor. Now one thing you need to be aware of is that you can only create a maximum of 16 light zones and so you have to conserve zones as much as you can when you create this template. You'll see very quickly how fast you can run out of zones and when you do the Add button will be grayed out. So let's get started and you should be on the Templates tab. Now click the Edit button and select New. Then double click the added template and name it properly. Now create a batch of zones by clicking Add several times and as before activate the first zone. Press C1, which is the kick, and then drag the split to the correct spot. Now once again, the first zone is inactive. And so now click on the Assign tab and change the color to black. It's important to note that this differs from the MK2 and that the keys are not, and in fact cannot, be turned off. And so if you want to play piano with no lights at all, you just need to create a template and turn the full zone black. And now you can activate the next zone and continue the process until you're finished. So I really do hope that this tutorial helps you get a lot more satisfaction out of using Impact XT and Persona Symphonic Instruments together with your S-Series Complete Keyboard. And if you found this video helpful, please kindly like and subscribe, and we will catch up to you on part two, which is focused on controlling Personas instruments with your keyboards, knobs, and buttons. Bye for now.